What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here and today we are taking a first look at the LG Optimus G Pro. This guy has not yet been picked up by any US carriers and we are taking a look at it all dolled up in its GSM unlocked version with support for 4G LTE, which you'd expect now for most modern phones. Kind of an odd look to the box with those dots that sort of fade up to the top. Let's go ahead and take a look. I have not had a chance to see this guy in person yet, so I'm pretty excited to take a look. Uh, this phone would probably most closely be related to uh, Samsung's Galaxy Note 2. So we'll pick that up, grab the phone. Feels pretty solid in the hand. Push it off the side for just a real quick second, and then we'll run through the specs and everything the phone has and turn it on. So let's see what you're going to get in the box. You've got a wall wart with different uh, country adapters on the top. We've got a pretty nice looking pair of headphones here, quad beat headphones. I don't usually go into too much detail about headphones, but these ones actually look relatively nice. Um, so you've got earbuds, you've got metal accent tips, you've got volume controls and inline mic on it, uh, then some other size earbuds depending on how big or little your ear is. We've got a charge and sync cable here, nothing overly exciting there. Uh, we've got a ginormous 3140 milliamp hour battery, it's 3140 milliamps, push that off to the side. We got some books. Not sure what language that is in. Um, we've got some other stuff and some cards and a dock, I suppose, or maybe perhaps for charging an extra battery. We'll take a look at that guy and see what it is. But that's not why you're here to see the accessories. You want to see the phone. So let's go ahead and peel off the screen protector because those fingerprints are really bothering me. Boom, and here we've got the LG Optimus G Pro. Android 4.1 is powering it. Push that off to the side. Uh, it's also got that same similar back that we saw on the Nexus 4, but this is plastic and does have a removable battery. So we'll go ahead and pull that stuff off there as well. Uh, from a dimension standpoint, it's 5.9 inches by three inches by a pretty decent uh, 0.37 inches and it weighs 6.04 ounces. So the screen is uh, pretty similar to the Note 2, 5.5 inches, and that's a full 1080p, being powered by a 1.7 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 600 processor, uh, which is the same processor actually found in the HTC One. Uh, two gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, plus micro SD, which is nice, uh, 13 megapixel camera on the back, 2.1 on the front, uh, Bluetooth 4.0, and NFC. So enough of me jibber-jabbering about the phone, let me pop in the battery, and we'll see how this guy performs. Be back in just a second. So I was going to pop in this battery that came in it, but it turns out there's already one in there, so we solved the mystery of what this big piece is. It's actually a separate battery charger. It's nice that LG included two gigantic batteries, so that's either a great sign or a really bad sign uh, for batteries. So that's already in there. And of course, on the back, you can see uh, the NFC radio there. Go ahead and power all that stuff back and power the phone on. Power button lives on the right hand side. We'll go ahead and continue our tour while it's booting up. Uh, there's your little finger slot if you want to pull off the plastic back. On the left, we've got a volume rocker up and down. And not sure what that button's going to do. Maybe it'll map to a camera. Perhaps you can set it for what you want. It's booting up. Looks like this one is set for SK Telecom, so all that language I didn't know is probably Korean. Uh, we've got a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. I believe that that is an IR blaster. Sort of some metal looking accents around it, but they're not real metal uh, here. On the bottom is where your charging and syncing cable is going to be, and I believe they'll do double duty as HDMI out. We've got some noise canceling mics and all the camera stuff that we talked about in the first part of the video. So we are all set up here. I'm gonna go ahead and do the setup, and now I'll come back in just a minute and we'll walk through what else she's got in the Optimus G Pro. All right, so we've got it all set up and ready to rock. And the screen looks absolutely gorgeous, as you'd expect from a full 1080p screen. Uh, so LG's done a lot of tweaking with Android, and it is Android 4.1.2, and I'll show you guys that, and I can show you some of the tweaks that they've done here. So the settings is broken up into four different categories, network, sound, display, and general, uh, which, first blush, actually makes things very easy to find. So I'll go to about phone, We'll take a look at some of the software information. You can see that we are running Android 4.1.2 on here. Um, so the big difference is you'll notice is when you pull this down, uh, you've got a lot of shortcuts here. You can scroll through and turn different things on and off, which I really like. Uh, what LG's got is some things called Q-Slide apps. 
And that's very similar to actually what Sony has. Um, and Samsung has something sort of similar. So if I go ahead and open up Memo, for example, it's going to open it up in a little window that's going to show up right on top of the screen. You can move it around depending on where you want. And you can go ahead and start typing. And you can see what the keyboard looks like as well. And of course, with Android, if you don't like that keyboard, you can download a ton of other options. So you got those Q slide apps. Uh, and there are just a few of those right now, uh, but hopefully we'll be seeing more uh, coming up. I really like the calculator one there in calendar. Uh, and Q Voice, um, also very nice, sort of their similar answer to uh, S Voice. So a ton of options here. Before you actually get to what your uh, notifications are, you only have the bottom half of the screen. But fortunately, you've got a 5.5 inch screen here. Uh, in which to work with. Uh, so the way you handle widgets and stuff is also different. If you long press, uh, you've got apps, downloads, widgets, and wallpapers. You can see what the widgets are. Most of them are pretty stock uh, Android, but there are a few uh, custom ones uh, that are done for LG. And we've got the SK Telecom version, so some are very custom for SK Telecom. And this phone has some other uh, odd things in it that we don't see very often here in the US that are kind of cool to check out. So go ahead and hit home. And speaking of home, you've got a physical button there and flanked on the left and right is a capacitive back button and menu button. If you want to get to your multitasking window, which looks like normal uh, Android multitasking, you just hold the home button and you can swipe stuff off to close it. Uh, taking a look here what the screen looks like when dealing with text or dealing with images, uh, it looks pretty crisp you know, on first blush. Uh, text looks very clear as you'd expect and the images, at least that I've seen, uh, look very good. But of course, we'll test those uh, in our full review to see how it performs and definitely check it out versus the Galaxy Note 2. Uh, build quality here looks to be really nice actually. It's got a very strong solid feel to it despite uh, being plastic, which is oftentimes knocked on devices. Uh, this one feels really, really nice. Uh, this button here is still a mystery to me. I'll go ahead and push it and see what happens. Looks like it opens up a memo screen. You go ahead and start writing right on the screen with your finger. You do not have any sort of included stylus here. Uh, I'll go ahead and hit home and see if I can get that stuff to go away. But you might not have a stylus, but you do have something different here. Uh, this little tab pulls up and I thought it was going to reveal some sort of stylus, but it just kept going going and going and going until it stops. It is a TV antenna, which is something very unique um, to uh, the Korean market and certainly other countries. Uh, they've got full TV tuner built in here. Now, I did the scan for channels, and unfortunately, we don't have any. Uh, they did include some, I guess it's it's the melon system, uh, what they call it in Korea, but uh, does not work here in the U.S., so if this ever does come to the U.S., don't expect that to be uh, on board here. Something also funny that I noticed in the SK Telecom book, when they give you the examples of what to do, they got a little guy doing doing Gangnam Style in there. I just found that funny. Um, so other than that, nothing else is really different, at least on first blush. I'm very curious to use the phone uh, and see how it performs. If you go ahead and you know, pinch, you can see all your different home screens and you can set default home screens. The rest of the stuff you can do uh, with Android. So again, any questions or things that you want to see, be sure to let us know. Let me bring in a Galaxy Note 2 just for size comparison here so you guys can see uh, what the differences are and how they look side by side. So the same end screen, certainly they look like long lost brothers and sisters. If you go ahead and stack them side by side, you can see the difference here. Uh, one thing I noticed that how the phone feels, um, the Note 2 feels more rounded when you hold it. Uh, this one feels more slab-like. So if you you know like a feel of one or the over the other, um, definitely keep that in mind. Certainly you've got that cool pattern uh, on the back of the Optimus G Pro that you don't have on the Note 2. Um, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. We definitely appreciate it. I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.